We've mentioned bipedality a lot already, but let's talk specifically about bipedality and bring it all together about all of these different body parts that come together to create how we walk. If you hadn't noticed already, humans are bipeds. It's probably how you locomote most of the time. At least most humans do. Um, so bipedality is just a fancy word that means walking on two legs. Bi means two, peed means feet. So we have two feet and, you know, also two legs. Um, humans are obligate bipeds. It is unique in primates, but of course we are not the only bipeds out there. Birds are also bipeds because they are not walking on their wings. Um, so when they do come down to the ground, they need to stand on their two feet. Um, kangaroos are also bipedal, um, but the form that we use for bipedality is unique because you can see with this bird, um, their their trunk is actually pretty much horizontal and it's because of their long necks that their um, head is able to look upright. And kangaroos, they also have a bit more of a uh, angle there because they counterbalance with their tail behind them. We don't have that. So we have to do something like this. Here we're comparing our posture to a chimpanzee. So we just balance everything right on top of our legs. Um, humans are unique that we are going for this like balancing, very you know delicate balancing act posture rather than any sort of counterbalance. Um, we also describe these different postures as pronograde when your uh, trunk is about horizontal. It's, you know, a little bit angled here, but it's closer to horizontal than vertical. And then orthograde is when you have a vertical trunk here. Um, but let's look at what's going on with our overall body. So uh, humans, when we stand upright, you can see in that small shaded uh amoeba below us, um, that's a, where all of our weight is centered. And that's a pretty small spot. When you compare that to a chimpanzee on four limbs, that's a much larger um, area where they are over. Chimpanzees, they can walk bipedally. They're just not very good at it and they don't do it very often. And you can see they actually take up a slightly bigger area than we do. Um, here we can look at the difference between a couple different postures in chimpanzees. So normally chimpanzees are of course all, on all fours, um, but when they do come up to two, um, just two legs, it's actually very difficult for them to extend both of their legs. You can see they actually, it causes them to pitch forward and they are just not balanced. So when chimpanzees um, stand upright, they actually bend their knees and that brings their center of gravity back over their feet. But that means they have to do this really, really awkward walk. So we can compare how a human walks on two feet versus how a chimpanzee walks on two feet. And our walk is very easy. You know, we go from kind of swing from one leg to the other, and our legs stay relatively long throughout this process. And you can compare that to the little wire model of our chimpanzee here. They have this bent hip, bent knee walking where they kind of like throw one side of their body um, forward. Uh, remember, they actually don't have the side stabilizer muscles that we do, um, so they just kind of throw their entire body forward. They, it's, it's not as efficient as us. But let's talk a little bit more about what humans do when we walk. We have a very specific path the weight takes on our foot. So it starts with our heel and our heel strike. As we roll through our foot, it actually goes to the outside of our foot and then the weight progresses through our big toe, as you can see in that diagram. When chimpanzees walk um, bipedally, um, the weight just kind of goes in a curve through the outside of their foot. Um, and you can see our the weight um, transfer happens in our foot in a very specific way around that longitudinal arch and then through that big adducted toe. We can also look at the difference of phases of um, bipedal walking. So that first phase is, of course, the heel strike. We have a stance phase as we are rolling through our foot, and then we have a swing phase as that leg is up in the air until the next heel strike. I highly recommend you check out this um, paper by Owen Lovejoy. He does a great job of talking about the evolution of the human walking and some of the most important um, anatomical modifications that made it happen. So can you explain what are some of the anatomical consequences of bipedality? Mm -hmm. 